Hey everyone! Today we'll do tonkotsu ramen. This delicious and creamy ramen from Japan is made out of pig bones that are boiled for hours and hours which results in an emulsification in the liquid and it makes it very creamy and delicious. We'll divide the recipe in phases since it's very long, I think you should take your time. And we're gonna start by doing the broth after we'll pass to the shashu, the pork belly that you usually top the ramen with. And after this, the tare, the concentrate. And last, the noodles, which are typically tough in the center. So let's start. For the broth, you will need around one kilo of pig bones, whatever you have access to. I advise pig trotters. One bunch of spring onion, water to cover the bones, two or three big pieces of ginger, around two centimeter each, four cloves of garlic peeled, two yellow onions unpeeled, and two shallots unpeeled. So we will start by putting all the bones you have in the pot. You're gonna then Cover it with the water. You cover it till around five centimeters, meaning half finger, and bringing to a hard boil and do it for 10 minutes while you try to skim off this foam that comes from the bones try to not get rid of the liquid but just the foam After the 10 minutes you stop, you see we have a clear surface and we'll put the bones through a colander and rinse them so that they're clean. Don't skip this blanching process because it's important to take the impurities of the meat as well as the deeply strong flavor of pork so that the other ingredients can penetrate through the broth and enrich it flavor wise. So here you have the clean bones. You can add this time enough water to cover one full finger from the bones. Attention that you will have to replenish obviously this water that evaporates during the process because it takes 12 hours. So yeah one full finger you then cut your bunch of spring onions in big chunks like that the full cloves of garlic The onions and the shallots just take any parts you see with earth, like the bottoms. But you can leave the peel on the rest. Like this. And the ginger you can peel with the help of a spoon and then slice it
You bring it to a gentle boil and you cover it for 12 hours. Attention, not simmering, you need to boil it because this is what will affect the texture and the flavor in the end. It has to boil for 12 hours. In this sense, I would advise you to actually do it in the morning because if you're doing it during the night, you cannot stir it since you have to stir it every once an hour because the bones have the tendency to stick to the bottom and we don't want any burn flavors. We pass now to the shashu, the soy braised pork belly. For this you will need a whole bunch of spring onion, a knob of ginger peeled like before and four peeled cloves of garlic, 150 ml of soy sauce, 125 ml of sake and another 125 of Shaoxing rice wine. If you don't have it, just replace for another 125 of sake, 180 ml of mirin and 80 ml of water. So you start by cutting, slicing the ginger. into the pot cloves of garlic you can leave them whole you do big pieces of spring onion like five centimeter more or less into the pot and you'll add the liquids The pork belly you can use around one kilo. You can leave the skin on like me or you can take it off if you don't like it. I personally like it. So what we will do now, it's actually a roll. The tightest possible you can. Like this. And with cooking twine, you'll take enough to roll some and you'll go after if needed, more is needed. So roll it tightly and start by the extremities. You can give one, two, three rounds to close it in one extremity and then you go to the other side and you do the same one two if needed roll it out two and three and only after you can go to the middle like one more so cut one of the ends So you have a well-made roll. Bring the liquid to a boil. And you place your 
pork belly on it. And reduce it to a simmer. And you cover with a drop lid. If you don't have one like me, you can make your own. Supposedly in Japan you use a Notoshi Buta, which is a drop lid that has some orifices if it's metal or it's simply in wood and you drop it off. This serves to distribute the the cooking heat in the same proportion through all the things you are cooking. If not, it basically cooks differently under than up. So you leave it for three to four hours and you basically turn it every half an hour. After almost four hours, here we have our caramelized and super beautiful pork belly as well as the remaining sauce that we put through a sieve to save it for after and we can also take advantage from this sauce to make some ramen eggs and marinate them overnight as we're gonna put also the pork belly in some plastic bag to marinate tightly in the fridge with the sauce so for this you will need just a bucket of water with ice and water to cook the eggs you can bring the water to a boil and gently place the eggs inside for seven minutes to have a custard like consistency if you want to have them runny you can do just six minutes for ramen i prefer to have it seven and you take them out and dip them in the iced water You can then take the eggs out of their shells and finally place both pork belly and eggs inside plastic bags with zipper that you can take to the fridge and drop half of the resulting juice from the pork belly in each of them. Accommodate in a corner of the bag if the bag is too big with the juices. Zip, take the air out and zip it.
Same with the eggs. And you're ready to save them overnight. We will pass now to the tare, the concentrate that we will dilute in the broth that we just made. For this, we will need two leaves of kombu, a big handful of bonito flakes, four stems of spring onion, 100 ml of soy sauce, 50 ml of sake, 100 ml of mirin, and 100 ml of kombu dashi. You can find the recipe for this one in my tempura video. So it is very easy, you will just need to put everything in a saucepan. and bring it to a boil and leave it boiling for 10 minutes after which we'll let it infuse out of the fire for one hour and filter we are now ready to prepare our ramen noodles for this you'll be needing an essential compound called sodium bicarbonate sold also as baking soda, meaning that it has a kitchen appliance and not just the one you use to clean because this one is more refined. So for this and before you pass through the work of the noodles themselves you should powder a tray with a baking sheet on it with this bicarbonate like this and bring it to the oven in 100 degrees for one hour so that you will break the molecule of the bicarbonate and transform it into carbonate. This will make your noodles chewy and have this typical consistency that you know in ramen. You have here the carbonate prepared. You will mix one coffee spoon, a good one, in 250 ml of lukewarm water and in a bowl you'll mix the 350 grams of flour and the water with the help of chopsticks or a spatula, something in wood, preferably. Attention, don't do it with the hands at this point because the carbonate can be quite reactive and irritative with the skin. And once the flour is mixed, you can start kneading the dough. Be sure you trap all the flour you can. It shouldn't be too sticky at this point and perfect for the hand to work it. To knead though you can watch my video of packery that we've done before. You're gonna knead it for 5 to 10 minutes.
and you leave it resting in room temperature covered with a tea towel for one hour. After one hour we are ready to work our noodles. We can work them into different ways. We can use a pasta machine, but if you don't have it, we can do it also by hand. I will explain after. So you can take your dough out. It should be ready to work and not too hard. You're going to need some rice flour so you can avoid that the dough sticks on each other. So we can start by making a roll of the dough like this and we can divide it into some parts like one, two, three, four, five, six. And we will gently use the kitchen roll to flatten them. We are now ready to use the pasta machine. As usual, you should start with the maximum depth, meaning the first settlement for the machine and then go to lower ones so we'll use some flour and advance to settlements This size should be good. And once more, some flour and set it aside. And we leave this to do by hand so that you get to see how you do that. And you add this guy so we can do noodles. Use the flour to separate them. And 
and here you have our beautiful noodles that you save aside repeating the same procedure with the other sheets so we can put the machine aside and I'm going to teach you how to do it by hand if you don't have one start by doing the same except that you will have to spread it more because we're not going to flatten it with the machine so do the thickness you can help yourself with flour to do the surface you will then fold it to the same side of course with some flour not to stick and another time to the same side like that and you're ready to cut them not too thin not too thick like that the fun of doing it by hand is not to have the same thickness so don't worry yourself to make them the same exactly what matters is the taste and it's nice if they have different shapes anyway as before powder them with rice flour and save them aside like the others and that's it you just need now to cook them in boiling water for one minute before you assemble the ramen and if you did too much dough you can always save it in the fridge for one or two days or freeze it so we are now ready to assemble our ramen you have here the tare that we've made the pork belly that was braised the 12 hour broth the ramen already cooked for a minute the marinated eggs and to add on that we chop for example some spring onion you will have some nori that we can roast or burn and you can also add one green vegetable of your choice I have kavo in my fridge but you can have anything else I don't know spinach or pak choy anything you like so we will start by adding some of the tare into the ramen bowl you can add to your taste and see after when you have the broth but two or three good tablespoons will be nice you can then add the broth into the bowl as you can see quite creamy you mix it you can taste to see if you want more or less concentrate or more broth I think it's perfect we are ready to cut our shashu should have some scissors and some gloves to do it we start by cutting the strings if you are remember so done with the strings you can then cut the slices of the shashu looks wonderful this step is not strictly necessary but I find it nice that if you have a blowtorch or a gas stove you can put some fire on the shashu 
like this. It will get a smoky, nice flavor. As well as a nice color. So after this, you can do a similar procedure to the nori. I repeat, if you don't have one, don't worry, just put it like that, it's still tasty. With lighter fire, if so, as you see, they're quite sensible. Like that. Ready? You can then put the noodles that have a chewy texture already. You can see that even by touching them. Pork belly. Half an egg to your taste. Or a full one if you want. Here is the texture I talk, told you about. The greens. The nori. You can sink part of them. Oh wait, you have some spring onion still left. And here you have your tonkotsu ramen. It was a long way here, but trust me, it's worth. I'm here to answer all your questions, as you know. Just forward them in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And I see you next time for a next recipe. Bye!